Jeff. got us a big old storm it's raining pretty good I just send some of this your way Maya so you can put some of them fires out all right here we go yep she's raining out there pretty good Alright, let me straighten y'all out. Sorry about that. There we go. Alright, let's see if we can turn this into something nice. Let's play. What's up, buddy? What's going on, man? How are you? Hey, Brienne, how you doing? What's going on, Jonathan? How are you, man? Y'all are just tuning in. This is what we're playing with. An awesome, awesome blank from Jesse Gilbert LeVere. And uh, it's going to be sweet. Hey Mark, how you doing, man? Look how big the rain drops are. Look how big the drops are. That's crazy. <laughs>
that's gonna be sweet. I'll be back in just one second, guys. I'm gonna sharpen this up, okay? Just a minute. Sharpen our tool up a little bit. Oh yeah. That's more like it. What's up, Christopher? How you doing, buddy? An imaginary, horrible, ugly grind. No particular type. Completely eyeballed on a basic tool rest on an old crappy machine. Hey Marcy, how you doing?
spot down where you can see that. That is awesome. <laughs> well, if it's any consolation, you can see it's almost 90 degrees. It's a horrible, horrible grind, and it doesn't match on either side. <laughs> so, like I always tell everybody, don't, don't sharpen your tools like me. You just learn how to use your tools well, however you sharpen them. But get a nice sharpening system. Don't do it like I do. <laughs> All right, let's get this back half done. with having a specific grind or swearing by a specific grind doesn't really mean anything is if you can take whatever grind you have and put it on the angle where that grind's gonna cut any grinds just as good as the next one that's why this horrible version of a 90 degree grind which isn't a thing and you should never do is just as good a cut as a perfect 60 or 40 degree grind like somebody else is gonna do but you just put the tool where it's gonna cut as long as it's sharp it'll cut it I'd like to have a nice sharpening system where I keep it at the same angle all the time, but I just haven't put the money into it yet. And with as well as this cuts on an eyeballed setup, whatever, it's a whole cheap tool anyway. It sure does do a good job. beautiful stuff Tim thank you I think Jesse said he's got about 30 more of these blanks so hit him up if you want one yeah, all right man have fun yeah I will enjoy the rain yeah we'll do appreciate it oh god okay yeah Nice. It's all in the hands, bro. It's all in the hands. Tell you a secret. When you got a horrible 90 degree grind, you set the tool below the center line of the piece it's not correct by any traditional standards but it's where this tool cuts the best so I'm all about do whatever it takes to have what you're using do the best job it can do don't follow some arbitrary set of rules because somebody said so if it doesn't work for what you're cutting with and what you're cutting it doesn't make any sense so figure out how your tools work best and if you've got them on the correct angle grind fine to, you know put them on the correct part of the blank but if you've got whatever else or whatever you're working with get it to where it cuts the best on the piece that you're working on that's all that matters 
No one's judging what it looks like when you're turning it. You should be judged on what it looks like when you're finished with it. Or else, maybe that's just my personal opinion and I should shut up, but I don't know. <laughs> it works for me so far. But it cuts pretty dang good for the little thing. This is where we are so far. Pretty freaking amazing. Loving this blank. Thanks, Jesse. This thing is fantastic. So this is where we're sitting right off of the uh, big roughing gouge. No sanding, no skew yet right off the roughing gouge pretty dang smooth we could probably go after it with I don't know 240 grit if we wanted to maybe even 320 but uh we're gonna smooth down our angles and bevels real quick <clears throat> then we'll get to some sanding I'm gonna go and resharpen my skew real quick I'll be right back sorry and sharp again. Let's play. I'm 
gonna turn this lathe into an ATM. <laughs> half is good now for ready to go to sanding I'm gonna smooth out this front half just a smidge mmm this is gonna be pretty woohoo alright turn on this front half real quick be a monster. <laughs> I'm excited about this pin. Really excited about this. This is a gorgeous piece of wood. So if you're wondering how Jesse Gilbert Levere's blanks turn out, they look kind of like this with no finish and no sanding done to them yet at all. Pretty freaking sweet. Said that's with nothing, no finish, no sanding right off the tool. Already got a little bit of shine to it, which is what we want. That's how you know you're doing it right. Get that good service finish going at the beginning. Remove these tools when we start sanding. Make a little seat for our vacuum to sit on. Go. All right. Just one second. Let me grab my sanding materials. This little bit started. How you doing? Welcome to the show. <laughs> All right, let's see here. We're gonna start off with some 180 Abernet. Let's see what we can do. Don't really need to go this far down, but it's gonna be a really pretty piece. So we want to make it as nice as we can. Pretty gentle with this 180 because it doesn't need much of it. it. Hardly needs any of it, really, but we're trying to do the right stuff with it. Gentle. 
sanding here. Ooh, this is gonna be nice. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> on a 240. And that lateral is too nice. <laughs> That's awesome, Brian. Sweet. Glad you guys are hanging out watching the show. All right. On to some 320 here. amazing Jesse thank you dude it's really a sweet looking pin man this is gonna be incredible when I'm done I hope that's the goal anyway Ooh, it's nice all right on to some 400 we're gonna run through these pretty quick because this stuff is so nice it doesn't need really a whole lot Really nice stuff. All right, that's at the 400 now. I'm gonna hit it with some, uh, Six hundred and eight hundred grit of this uh, granite blue foam back paper, just to finish it out. Just one second. All righty, here we go. Brian Bloom, what's going on, buddy? A little bit of a thunderstorm out here now. <clears throat> Alright, that's done 600. I'm gonna hit with some 800. We'll start putting some finish on here. We'll see what it's gonna look like. Because it is gonna look nice. What's up, Steven? Australia, what's going on, man? We're here in balmy Charlotte, North Carolina. With a big fat storm outside. Hanging out, man. Alrighty. What's up, Greg? This thing looks like a dang snake. Alright, so that's up to 800 grit sanding now. I'm gonna grab a little bit of uh, DNA, clean out the dust. Here we go. Thunder. Uh, 
Uh, that's a Jesse question. There we go. All right. So. Uh, it's sanded to 800 grit with no finish yet. Ooh, this is going to be nice. Nice, nice. process we're going on with the uh, mercury medium flex for this Shreveport Louisiana Woo. all right black ash bro there we go I wasn't sure <laughs> Lay down some finished coats. Coat number one is on the way. <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> okay. Yep. That's awesome. I like where that's going a lot. Some accelerator. Code number two coming on here. Jesse is an expert at getting the right stuff and getting it over to Wood Dynamics and selling it and making it awesome. <laughs> Hi, Jesse's daughter. Welcome to the show. All right, here comes coat number three. three coats what's up Denny how you doing man All right, that's for 
coat number three. Let that dry for a minute. Coat number four, the DT line. Yeah, tricky, tricky. Tell your friends. <laughs> what we got going on outside. Ugh. Angry, nasty storm. <laughs> Chiming in. <laughs> if you know me, you must know I don't play any video games. There's no time because I'm always doing this. <laughs> Everything I'm intrigued in is uh, the potential for this finish because it's 100% humidity out here to maybe cloud up on me. So I'm going to keep tabs on that and if it starts to, I'm going to shut this down and we'll do it a different day. But so far I think it looks alright. I just don't know because it's really, really soppy out there. We're gonna find out. Still looks pretty good though. Coat number five here. Good news. I haven't had any issues with it either. I just figured if it was ever going to happen, it'd be today because it's dumping rain out there and this whole garage is wide open. So we'll see. <laughs> Good old Houston. Hey, Ralph, if you want one. I've got one more of these, buddy. Hit me up in a DM and we can talk about making you one. So I got one more like this, Rob, if you want one. Five coats squared away. See if we get one more. Is that enough? Yeah, we got enough for one more coat. We're gonna run this to six coats for today. 
let it ride. Well, in my head we're gonna make it six coats. I'm fresh out, team. We're gonna make it five coats today, I guess. There it is. All right. Six coats. <laughs> and fresh out of the end up. In the nick of time. All right. Throw some accelerator on here. Finished off. You need a pin or a blank, Greg. A blank. Uh, that's a Jesse question. A finished pin is a me question. <laughs> Tim McKenzie, what's up, buddy? playing with toys today. Alright, so this is six coats laid on here. Wait till they get nice and hardened up. Big comment. <laughs> yeah, I ain't turning no blanks for somebody else, and I'm not going to be able to assemble the pin and make all the profit. I'm sorry. This is too much work. That's going to be a good enough diploma. <clears throat> we're going to leave it at six coats for the day. And we're going to try out our new toys. We got some new stuff here called Zona paper. And it is fantastic. Uh, you get it on Amazon for like $13.99. You get one of each sheet in an eight and a half by 11 size or something like that. A good size. Cut them into small squares like this. And uh, I've used them on acrylics with very much success. Awesome, awesome, awesome success with this. But um, I haven't tried it on a CA finish yet. So we're going to give it a shot. If it is terrible, crap. <laughs> we'll have to start over when I finish. And I don't have any more CA. So we're going to see. This is the, the real acid test for the Zona paper. I used it earlier on an acrylic blank and it was fantastic. So, we're going to see what the word is with that today. Now, let me go re-verify here. Yeah, this stuff is wet or dry, so I think I'm going to try and wet sand this. Give that a shot and see what we can turn it into. I've had very good results with this stuff so far. Always dry, but I think for a CA finish, since it's so thin, I'm going to try and wet sand it. Uh, to see if I can get keep from burning through the finish here. So let me slide this over a little bit. <clears throat> Make sure this is nice and cured up. <clears throat> let me grab some water for just a second. Alright, so this is supposedly the unequivocal uh, micro mesh replacement. That is the goal for this stuff. We'll see. I like the micro mesh because micro mesh it lasts forever. This, so far as I can tell, each little square is going to give you one pin. But you get a big chunk of it. So we'll have to see. Um, and I haven't done it wet sanding, so it might stay less gooped up if you wet sand with it. I'm going to find out right now. Then we'll know for sure.
As always, clean hands and get started. All right, so for wet sanding, so far, with my 10 seconds of wet sanding experience with this now, <laughs> this stuff is a lot, <clears throat> it seems like it cuts through and smooths out the material faster, but with a more delicate touch, I think. It feels like you're less likely to sand through the finish with this, maybe? But it still cuts through the uh, the CA faster, which is an unexpected kind of a thing. Mm. That's very nice, very quick. All right, so that's first grit down. There's only like six of these, so it should go in about half the time that your regular micro mesh goes in. Man, this stuff is nice feeling. It just feels good. This stuff just makes it dang smooth, quickly, very quickly. So I'm thinking <coughs> that if you're dry sanding with these, you're going to get a one-time use out of it. <coughs> per little square. But I'm wet sanding with it now, and it doesn't seem to be gumming up at all. So I'm thinking if you wet sand with it, you can get I don't know how many pins out of one little square like this, but you can definitely get, it seems like, at least more than one pin out of uh, one of these, uh, out of each grit, so that's good, it's less of a throwaway kind of a thing, it feels like, when you wet sand with it, but um, if you dry sand with it, it's going to gum up enough to the point where you probably can't use it again. So for wet sanding, yes, I think I'm going to get more than one use out of each pad. Dry sanding, you will not. 
they definitely gum up when you dry sand with it. But uh, this is feeling really nice, actually. Really, really good stuff. Uh, this is six coats. Okay. Thanks, Rob. All right, we'll call that done with the wet sanding of this stuff. Let me clean off the blank. Man, that's pretty nice, man. So that is with the Zona paper from 30 micron to 1 micron in maybe 6 sheets, I think. That's a pretty dang nice finish to have not touched it with any buffing compound yet at all. So, uh, yeah, I'm on team Zona paper. It does a better job than the micro mesh at making a uniform finish. The micro mesh, you run the risk sometimes of having, even if it's perfectly shiny, having a little bit of texture left. But the very first grit of this zona paper just knocks it all off immediately and makes it very, very smooth. So I am now officially on team zona paper. I like it, it works phenomenally. And I'm gonna get rid of these guys and move on to some buffing compound. And we're gonna shine this thing up real nice. Get it on Amazon, man. It's about $13.99, I think, for six, uh, eight and a half by 11 or so sheets of it. It's like, uh, you know, a piece of ink paper, you know, regular, whatever, printed paper. Uh, and it comes with one of each grit about that size. Yep. Okie doke. So here we go. I'm going to hit it with some of the Hut Ultra Gloss Plastic Polish. We're going to buff this thing out and make it pretty and shiny. No problem, Steve. All right, here we go. Let's make this thing sparkle. Shall we? Yes, sir. Arizona paper is the one. Like Arizona, but less arid. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, they're pretty much the best, I think shaves off a lot of time and a lot of repetition get you going off and done with what you're trying to do real quickly and that's nice get more inventory that way more things done and I think they make a smoother finish as well I like a micro mesh finish just great but man this stuff is it makes it smoother If it can be much smoother than a micro mesh finish, mm -hmm. this is the way to do it. Yes, please. Alrighty. I'm gonna hit this with some buffing compound one more, one more time. Uh, just for a second. <clears throat> and then we will take it off, throw it on the buffing wheel. 
and finish it out. Brian, are you still here? <laughs> Yeah, it makes it real quick, man. Real, real quick. Okay. And it just makes a really pretty finish, too. I mean, just perfect. With little to no drama. And then, as always, get some clean water. Rub across your blank, get rid of any excess buffing compounds. Clean it up nice. Yep. That's pretty sweet. She's still here. Okay, cool. Thanks, Christopher. <clears throat> Alright, so that is off the buffing compound. Man, it's nice. Uh, still haven't used any of the, uh, or still haven't hit the buffing wheel with it yet, so that's some pretty dang nice finish to have not touched the buffing wheel with it yet. So, yes, I am a proponent of the Zona paper, and it looks like with this small of a sheet, even if you're wet sanding with it, you can get more than one application out of it, Stephen. But if you're dry sanding, you will not. So just bear that in mind. Seeing some Sam Smith. <laughs> Gotta remember some of that dude's lyrics. <clears throat> it's a lot of crying involved. <laughs> I do love his stuff though. He's got a very nice voice. Slow it down to 1810 RPMs right now as well. Oops. Gotta get the belt on straight. And actually, also, uh, I need to take y'all and put you on the regular stand here. So give me just a minute. I'll try and uh, get this all squared away. <laughs> Thank you. I will try. <laughs> Sorry, I got y'all looking at the floor. Hang on just a minute. Oh, 
Okie dokie. So that is y'all's stand on the tripod that we usually hang out on. And now we're going to trade over to the chair. <laughs> Give me one second, guys. I got to let y'all stare at some very lovely sawdust for just a second. Oh, it's out of focus today. There we go. Just a minute. I got to fix this uh, tripod situation. Okay. Alrighty, there we go. Sorry about that. Let's get y'all rolling here. Ah, uh, I know, man. Everybody wants to be haters on the flippy floppies. Well, I'm a flippy floppy, flippy floppier. So. Sometimes you just gotta do it. But I will accept the grief and I expect fully that if I ever hurt myself or my toes on a live feed, please make fun of me and say I told you so. I will understand and respect the making fun. I will deserve it. No big deal. Until then, I'm still wearing my dang flip flops. As long as it's a hundred degrees outside, I'll be flipping and a flopping. When it cools off, I won't. So I clean off the ends of the pin that was sitting on the bushings. You sand towards the inside of the pin, sit the pin on an angle or the blank on an angle where just the side you're touching is touching and then skip it towards the direction of the middle of the blank. That way it won't <clears throat> lift up your finish and peel it off the side. Then once you get all the little ends done, you get a little circular sand and another circular sand that is my answer to the non-stick bushings because I don't like them as you lose the uh, the correct diameter of your pin barefoot it is yeah but yes please make good fun of me if, if I hurt my toes I will accept all of it because I will deserve it until then, I'll be in my flippy floppies while it's hot. Sometimes I might even be in my swim trunks. Just like that Lonely Island song. <clears throat> Alright, so we've got our <clears throat> buffing wheel here with uh, the blue buffing compound. This side is clean even though it looks dirty. Slowed our lathe down to 18, 10 RPMs. Yep, <clears throat> that's sweet. It really saves you a lot of effort. Crocs man, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, parting two on the foot would be not very pleasant. Agreed. We want to avoid the parting tool foot plank at all costs. That's a good stabbing tool right there. You do not want that to hit your foot. Woo! Somebody suggested the other day that if I dropped one of these <clears throat> lathe tools on my toe, it would break my toe. I just don't think, I think it would probably cut your toe pretty good. But I don't think it's going to break your toe. It's not like a hammer or something. It's a very lightweight tool, but 
what do I know? I'm the guy turning in sandals. So, <laughs> maybe I just need to shut up. <laughs> I know enough to have not got anything on my feet yet. That's good news. I'm holding on to that one. Delicious. I didn't charge enough money for this pen, team. <laughs> I blue compound you just... Yes, I just press it on the wheel while it's running. We, that's what I said. That would be a really soft toe to be able to break with just one of these little lightweight lathe tools. Here we go. So that... is why I'm now on Team Zona Paper. Alrighty. So, yep, we're a fan of the new stuff. We'll be using that pretty much strictly from now on. <laughs> that is a done deal. All right, let me bring y'all over here. Press set up here. All right. Now, I've never put together one of these Cambridge kits, so I don't know how it works. You might have to give me a moment to uh, try and figure this thing out here. Oh boy. Yep, this looks complicated. <laughs> I might have to look at the instructions. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's see if I can get you guys turned over here. Anthony, what's up, buddy? I think you might like these, boss. Uh, yep, let me see if I can get this camera over. Well, y'all need to be looking real quick. <clears throat> okay, give me just a minute. Let me uh, see if I can sort out how the heck this thing's supposed to go together because I have no clue.
All right, that makes sense. That'll be the cap. All right, so if Brienne is still here, I'm gonna have to apologize to everybody else in the group for a minute. Somebody told her I like to sing. Thanks, Jesse. And uh, so apparently now I gotta sing a song for Brienne and for Maya, who have been asking that I sing something in the middle of one of these here live streams. So. There you go, Steven. Well, let me figure out how to put this mofo together real quick. <laughs> I don't know. And then uh, after that, we'll go ahead and see about singing her a little song. Hmm. Ooh, I don't know. It's complicated. Oh. Oh my. You follow my Instagram? <laughs> nice. Yep, the Instagram will tell all. Get us all in trouble. I'm confused for real. Usually, this goes in a side. Oh dear. Anybody got the instructions for this thing? <laughs> Everybody be stalking me all the time. Oh my good gracious. What is I going to do? I'm going to go there. Holy cow. I really might have to look at the instructions on this, you guys. And I don't have them. I don't know how it goes together. Me goes to find Instagram. <laughs> you guys. All right. Okay, really, I'm gonna have to go and see how this thing is put together. Damn it, because I can't figure it out. Shit. Uh, it's the Cambridge kit. The one from Woodcraft they had on sale the other day, which is awesome but I never looked at how it goes together, so I don't know how it freaking goes together. And that is bad news for me right now. Here I am, supposed to be knowing some shit. <laughs> and clearly not knowing it. Anybody got any knowledge on where each of these pieces goes on this crazy pin kit? Come on, somebody smart. While we wait for some smart answers, because I don't have any. Again, here's our sweet finished out blank. All right. Oh, I've dropped my little... I know, but I don't have them, and I can't look them up because I'm on my live stream. <laughs> I can't get out of it or it'll all go away forever. Oh, I wish I were smarter.
Aha! Wait just one gosh darn minute here. This whole, th you only get the plastic tube in the bottom. And then you got the rings that go on the plastic tube. Yeah! Oh yeah! Process of elimination style. That's how we're learning today. You gonna learn today? I might learn today. I do need a laptop. I need a few things in here that I ain't got right now. <laughs> I think I might have got it squared away though. So I'm gonna vote this and this together. Go on to the cap. So that's the cap section. All right, we'll say that's that. This is the bottom section. Boom. So I'm only stumped for one more piece. Boom, that's there. Cool. That's going to be on the back of this, isn't it? Nope, it's going to be on the top of this somewhere. Mmm! This piece just seems extra to me. It will be that, remember that one time. <clears throat> but, we just got, about got it figured out now. And uh, since we have now made it part of the public knowledge pool here, let me sing a song for Brienne so that we've done our fair duty since we told her that I would sing her a song. Oh, I got it now! Yeah! You're gonna go here. No, come here. <laughs> That's right, you're gonna learn today. We won't tell them what they're gonna learn today just in case they don't know yet. Go watch some Kevin Hart stand up. Oh yeah. We got her figured out now, boys. Woo! And that just screws right on the top. Boom! Look at that, commonsensical style. <clears throat> you gonna learn Monday. <laughs> okay, dope. So let's put this mofo together. And uh, so for Brienne, <clears throat> told me not to cry when you were gone. But the feeling's overwhelming, it's much too strong. Can I lay by your side next to you? Take care of you. you. There you go. Now we're saying something. How about that? <coughs> Okie doke. Where were we? Good. That's what we want. All right. I like this kit. This is a nice kit. Yep, don't tell anybody we were singing on here. We'll keep that between us, the 25 of us. <laughs> oh, we dropped the ring. Oh my good gracious. Oh, heck, where did it go? 
Thanks, team. Don't drop your pretty chrome rings. They are really hard to see in a floor that's covered in crap. Oh dear, I should have watched that fall. <laughs> yep, sorry about that guys, we had to sing something. All right, everyone assist. Help us find the ring. <laughs> Which way did it bounce? Which way did it roll? Come on, it should be really shiny. It should be easy to spot. <laughs> oh, damn. Don't everybody raise your hand at once, but if you see a chrome ring, yell out where you see it. <laughs> we are on special teams today, guys. <laughs> Remember that one time when we all helped look for the stupid chrome ring that I am too dumb to watch fall when it falls? Yep. This will be that time. We're here making memories. <laughs> tracks of the Drill. I freaking hope it's not inside the Tracks of the Drill Press. That would really suck. I don't see anything sparkly in there. Urgh. Thanks, Greg. All right. I'm going to take two minutes and look for this thing. If I don't find it in two minutes, I'll shut down the feed and put the pin together. All right, I got two minutes. Eee! I'm still on the floor. I have not left you. <laughs> There's a freaking mower in the way. It could be under the mower. Oh, jeez. Oh, I got an idea. I got a possible resolution without having to wait for me to find it. Screen that cheesecloth manufacturing. That's a good idea. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna resolve this lost ring situation a little bit later and right now I'm gonna steal one of the rings off another kit that I just bought that way we don't have to waste all the time and everybody bail which I would totally understand if you did <laughs> all right so let's see that ring was for this back section just a minute here we will find the one ring. There it is. Alright. Just a sec. 
I got my swim trunks and my flippy floppies. Yes, we're flippy flopping. All right, so I'm stealing the ring out of a different kit. I have to apologize to the new kit, but we'll find the other one later. And then everything will be cool. That's why you buy two kits at a time. In case you're doing a live feed for 25 people and you freaking lose one like an idiot, then you look like a smaller amount of idiot, but only by a little bit, so. <laughs> it's all good. Here we go. All right. We're back at it. At it again, once again, time and time again. Yes, sir. Then you screw in the back piece. Alrighty. Now, I believe, as is customary, the precious. <laughs> yes, indeed, the precious. Alright, so, once you get it halfway put together, now we're going to... One is none, two is one. That is exactly what's up. And also, one and one and one is three. And he's got to be good looking because he's so hard to see. I understand that's sometimes the case as well. This whole bottom of this thing is straight plastic, so if you're aggressive with it, you will destroy it. Be careful with that. <laughs> I like it, though. I like it. All right. Don't close it. Keep it open. Alrighty, so now all we gotta do is square away our cap situation. Which we will do here. Finish that up. Ooh, I guess it's important to not overpress this, which you can easily do. As it appears. Cautious with that. Very cautious with that. Yeah, you gotta be real touch and go with that guy. If you can get him too deep in there, it looks like to me. And at that point, you're in big old troubles because it won't screw on if you push it too far in. Alright, let's see here. <laughs> Yep, we gonna like this one. All right, give me just one second. I'm gonna screw this guy down on here nice and tight. Hopefully, without screwing anything up with it. Oh, whoops. <laughs> this thing has got a little slot for the clip to sit in. Careful, or you will move the clip away from the slot where it's supposed to live. And at that point, it will not go right. So, careful with that. Okay. There we go. 
Yeah, you gotta be careful with this kit. It can get a little sketchy on you. It appears. That'll do. All right, one second. Let me put this uh, refill in here. And we'll see how this little thing is gonna look. All done up nice. Okay, we got it together now. Sorry for the long wait and the craziness and the singing. <laughs> I'm sure you've all had enough of that. <laughs> you got as much free time as you use, boss. All the time in the world, if that's the time you're putting in. You just gotta do this stuff in your free time then it feels free all right let's go over here we're gonna give it a final buffing finish it out all pretty light oh, hell <laughs> I just face planted the whole team oh no there we are Sorry, did we break the camera? No, we did not. <laughs> All right, give me just a second. Now that I've done throwing the whole camera on the dang ground like a big dummy. Are you so upset because I didn't save you any $5 kits, man? I'm sorry. I know it hurts. It hurts so good. <laughs> I bet it was pretty rough. All right, let me rebuff this thing. I didn't drop the pin, so that's good news. All right, I'm gonna hit one more buffing wheel time, and good gracious, this thing is pretty. If I'm selling this thing anymore, I want to keep it. This mofo is nice looking. Okay, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, we dropped everybody. <clears throat> okay, thank you for sticking around the entire time. I know that was ridiculous. But, uh, Hopefully, it will be worth it. So we can take a look at this monster right here. We're going to call this one the Ritz. Just one second. Put some junk over here. <clears throat> yep, I'm digging this thing. 
She's nice. All right, that's our pin number two for the day. I ain't got as many as I can get away with, but uh, we're going to have some sweet pictures of this thing up pretty soon and uh, get it off to its hopefully happy new owner. It's a monster. I'm digging it. There we have it. The Ritz. Thanks a lot, guys. Y'all have a lovely afternoon. <laughs> See you later.